everybody, this is Birch. Um, you know, we talk a lot about the construction of comic stories, about how people get to their ideas and everything else. And it begs the question, I think, that this viewer is, uh, is asking here, which is, well, um, I, let me take a step back. At times, and I, I mentioned this in a recent video talking about how the summer blockbuster got a bad reputation for just being mindless escapist entertainment, as if that's a bad thing. I, I you know, I, in, no matter how much I've tried to get people to explain to me what, what's wrong exactly with escapist entertainment, yeah, for that matter, what's wrong with mindless? I mean, it's, it's definitely meant as a slight. It's meant as, you know, something negative. Oh, it's mindless, and meaning, meaning any moron could watch it. But wouldn't that also say that, you know, yes, anyone can watch it? Aren't that what we've been beating into our heads over and over is that comics are, are supposed to be for everyone. They should be inclusive of everyone. Well, that includes intelligence, too. So, yeah, I mean, smart people, dumb people, whoever, everyone can enjoy it. And maybe when you're walking into a movie theater or where you're, when you, you know, you're picking up a comic book, you know, it, it doesn't need to resemble high school trigonometry. It can actually just be a comic book. It, it can just be good. You know, I, I just be good. It's, it's, you know, not everyone needs to be the next Alan Moore. Not everyone needs to be the next, I, I don't know. I mean, half the people trying to be the next, not half the people, 95% of the people trying to be the next Alan Moore are failing absolutely miserably at it. So maybe you should just try and be the next entertainer instead. Maybe that, maybe that would be an idea. But this is kind of along the same vein of it. And uh, this is the, the, the word formula. Formula. Formula is bad. That's what people tell you. Oh, it's, it's, oh that's a formula. What's weird is that the, uh, the other um, word that gets overused, but it hasn't quite tipped over into bad yet, is trope. Like, oh, it's a, it's a common trope. Oh, it's a, it's a trope that get used in, okay, fancy pants, you know, it's, it's a formula, it's a trope, whatever it happens to be, it can be good or it can be bad depending on who's writing it. So here's this question, it says, hey, Perch, uh, not super comics related, but I recently found people criticize Power Rangers for being a very formulaic story. In addition, I know people criticize a lot of manga for being that way as well. I agree there is a formula, but I wonder if that's so bad. The Terrifics by Jeff Lemire was a story that stole from the classic Fantastic Four, from plots to villains to character dynamics, but I love that series. Isaac Asimov is my favorite short story writer, and most of his stories are in the same format. Then again, there are stories like All-Star Superman that feel like a breath of fresh air with how different they are. What are my thoughts? I, my thoughts are a formula is just fine. Just fine. There's, there's nothing wrong with a formula in a comic as long as it's either a good formula or it's just done well. Um, formulas work for a reason. I mean, they're, they're shortcuts to try and get the audience engaged. If you're coming up with something brand new, first off, I think a lot of creators try and come up with brand new, never before seen concepts. This is something completely out of the box, a, a radical new idea playing off of completely unexpected tropes. Uh, this, this, this new concept is, but the reality is most of those things aren't. They call them that, but if you dig into it, it's like, well, actually this was done many, many times before. And a lot of the comic runs that are hailed for being kind of brand new, I mean, hell, I, you know, no knock against Matt Fraction's Hawkeye. It was an entertaining and well done formula, but it was also a formula that had been done before. Several indie comics, including one by Fraction himself, have been done in this style. This, it wasn't radically new. Was it new for Hawkeye? Sure. Was it new for Marvel-ish? I mean, you've, you've seen this kind of formula go on before with, uh, you know, Marvel fanfare and certain other books that had tried the similar approach. Not in 12-inch issues, granted. Not with all the pieces they put together that they did. But it's still, it was a formula. So, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong in leaning into it. I think that people who read comics, I mean, from a marketing perspective, you don't want to maybe go out the door saying, hey, you know, we are going to put out a comic that is, uh, you know, pretty much like the things you've enjoyed in the past. It's, it's, we're, we're actually, actually, I think this would probably work pretty well. But I mean, if you, if you market a comic by saying, this comic does not have original ideas, but it does use a story that you've loved a million times before, and it does it well. So, you know, buy this comic, because pretty confident you're going to like it. You're going to like, you've loved all the things this comic is based off of, so you're certainly going to like this one, too. That's the pitch.
I, I, I mean, would that, I, I don't know, that would be a pretty bold and daring kind of pitch, but it would also be a fairly honest and, and potentially, you know, smart one. That's, that's the challenge with, uh, with comics is they're, they're, they often are unsatisfied with what they are. And so they strive to be different, but in being different, they're actually not that different. And they just wind up confusing everything. A formula is fine. I think uh, you can have lots of different formulaic stories. I think there's plenty of people who criticize it on the internet because they got to find something to criticize it over. But if, uh, if the formula is smart, if the story beats are good, if the thing is put together well, it's going to be fine. And go for it. I don't know. I have not been reading the Power Rangers, so I couldn't tell you if it was formulaic or not. Uh, the Power Rangers is not entirely my thing, uh, but that's that's completely fine. So, anyway, I uh, yeah, th- there you go. I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but anyway, um, kind of related to this, so a second question, but I think it's from the same person, so I don't feel bad combining them together. It says, um, you know, the, the basic question is this, and maybe it kind of goes into the formulaic and the fact that people struggle, you know, they rage against what's naturally works. The question is, do you think creators would stop supporting bootlegging if they got paid based on sales? And the basic question is, do you think creators stop bootlegging if they got paid based on sales? Like a bonus pay for every 10000 or do you think that the creators would still support bootlegging? In this case, I think you mean pirating. And to be clear, a lot of creators do not support pirating, but there are certainly some that kind of just shrug. And the reason is kind of exactly as you identified. It's, it's not money out of their pocket. It's amazing how creators get a hell of a lot more invested in stopping piracy when they go do their first image series or when they do something where, you know, the dollars are flowing more directly into their pockets. Suddenly, people speak out a lot more against piracy. It's wild how that happens. But, you know, a lot of the people who are, uh, you know, been writing for Marvel or DC for several years and just kind of, you know, on that track, ah, you know, piracy. I mean, because the reality is it, they're not seeing the impact of piracy hit their wallet. And if they did, then, you know, you definitely see some people, you know, take more of a hard stand on it. But, but right now, no. Um, I, I think in general, and I've done the video before and I've talked about this before, I think anything you can do that cr- connects the creators more to the actual sales of their book, to the performance of their title is a good thing. I think uh, bonuses based on performance is smart. I think pay based on unit sales is smart. I I absolutely think this is something that should be done. Um, It'd be healthy for creators. It would be, uh, but but also, and this is why I think the two questions are tied together, you'd see a lot more creators being perfectly okay with a good solid formula if the formula they produced was a winning one. I mean, you know who doesn't bitch too much? I've used him, and by the way, He's not my favorite director by a mile, but Michael Bay, you do not see him out there going, you know, I, uh, you know what I really hate? I really hate, uh, summer blockbuster formulaic movies. I just, uh, they're, they're just not for me. He doesn't say a word. He has his style. It's, you can, you can almost immediately recognize it. It tends to draw people in and make money. It, it, it is what it is. Lots of haters out there. The funny thing, all the haters aren't making those same amounts of money. So, I, I absolutely believe the publishers should and, and absolutely should move to uh, incentive-based pay, uh, paying a bonus based on performance of book. Absolutely. It would be smart to do. It would be uh, healthy and better for everyone. Uh, but uh, I don't, uh, I'm not going to hold my breath. I don't see that happening anytime soon, but it would definitely be uh, smart if they did. Anyway, thank you for the two pieces of mail. Um, you know, curious what you guys think. Uh, Is there a formula you love, you hate? What is so wrong about a formula? Somebody let me know in the comments below. Is, is to to me, the only bad formula is when somebody does it really terribly. And, and granted, there have been plenty of those, certainly plenty of people who, uh, do an absolute shit job with the formula and, and, you know, that deserves all the criticism it gets. But let me know in the comments below what you what you think, like, and subscribe. Of course, as always recommend to a friend, appreciate that too. And thanks for listening.